Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the Illusion Necklace with Swarovski Elements. So as you can see we've got this beautiful necklace and that's created with using the Illusion effect. So we're going to be working with monofilament and Swarovski bicones. And we can also make a pair of earrings. So if we have a little look at what's in the kit, So we're going to be working with a very, very fine, but very strong monofilament. You also get in the kit some stretchy elastic that looks very similar, but it's a little bit thicker and it's stretchy. And you also get your beading thread. But for this project, we're going to just work with the monofilament. So you're also going to get the different components here. So we've got some findings. So we're going to work with ball head pins, our toggle clasps, our crimps, which are little tiny tubes. a length of chain, our earring findings, our shepherd hooks, our jump rings, and our beautiful Swarovski elements, which are our bicones in the three different colours. We're also going to be working with three different sorts of pliers. We've got our blue handled round nose pliers, our red handled chain nose pliers, and our yellow handled side cutters snips. So if we have a look at our starting point. What we want to do is we want to cut two lengths of chain. And we want two lengths of six centimetres. So we're going to take our snips or our side cutters and measure six centimetres. I'm going to pull the chain taut and cut into one of the links. When you've got your one length, you can then compare and cut the next length. So we've got our two lengths of six centimetres. We're then going to cut four lengths of about 120 centimetres, which is going to be more than we need, but it's going to give us a total length of about 44 centimetres for the total necklace, or about 18 inches. So as you can see on the reel, you've got a little notch here. So I'm going to take that out of the notch and start to measure the lengths. So you want four 120 centimetres. So every time I've measured the length, I'm just going to pop it back in the notch. and cut the length. So I'm going to do that four times. So I've cut all four lengths to 120 centimetres and I've grouped them neatly at the end. So now I need to attach my monofilament to my chain. So I'm going to pick up one of my crimps, my crimp tubes, I'm going to pop all four pieces of monofilament through the crimp tube. So I've got the crimp tube on. So now I'm going to pick up one of the pieces of chain and put all four pieces through the last link of the chain. 
So what we want to do now is to lock that piece of chain into a loop. So we're going to feed the monofilament back through the tube. So if you find it easier, you could use a little bit of glue or clear nail varnish just to group the ends together. And we just want to feed that back through. Push that so that the loop of the monofilament gets smaller. So now that's locked in place, but what we need to do is we need to lock that crimp so that it stops moving. So to do that, we're going to flatten the tube so that it becomes, rather than being hollow, it's going to become flat. So to do that, we're going to use our red-handled chain nose pliers. I'm going to pop the crimp into the pliers and squeeze down. So that now has locked that loop in place. And we can just take those and trim the ends. So now hold the two out of the way. So this is the side that I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to take my yellow handled snips, my side cutters, and just snip off the ends that I don't need. So now I can start and separate out each of the strands. And on each strand, I'm going to start to add in, and you can be quite random with this, my Swarovski elements. So I'm going to pick up one of the bicones and let that fall all the way. to the end. So I'm going to hold here and I'm going to take the end and feed it back through the bicone from the opposite direction. I'm just going to support the bicone with my thumb and my finger and start to pull. And you'll be able to see the loop that will then form around the bicone. So you can see as I pull, it's getting smaller and smaller. So I'm going to pull and pull tight. So that bicone is now caught on the monofilament. So I'm going to again, take the end again. I'm going to pick up a different bicone and again let that drop and again hold the bicone and take the end of the monofilament and feed it through in the opposite direction and pull until we create that smaller loop and Pull till it gets really tight, pull nice and tight, so it's caught onto the monofilament. I'm going to keep adding, and we can do it as random, randomly as we like, and you can vary the distances. So for this one, I'm going to go much closer to the one before, and again, back through from the opposite direction and pull. And you can see this one has moved much further down than I'd wanted it to be. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my finger into that loop and guide it so that it's closer and back nearer the, the one before so that I can position it. And when I'm happy with the position, again, that loop's gonna get smaller. I'm gonna pull really quite firmly and they're gonna stay in place. So you're gonna keep going and doing exactly the same 
all the way along. And what's really quite important and that you get really good effects is that when we, when we do our second, third and fourth strands, that we just alter the position of where we put the bicones. But you'll have some that overlap and in a way you'll get the best effects if you're not too uniform about it. So you're going to keep adding all of your bicones onto about a length of roughly about 44 centimetres on all four strands. So when you've done all four strands, you'll get that type of effect. So you can see that they sort of float in the air and you almost can't see the monofilament. So now to finish off the ends, we need to do almost the reverse of what we did at the start. So we've got four ends to work with. So again, we're going to group our four ends together. We're going to take our crimp and go through all the way into the crimp. I'm going to take our length of chain and back through the last link of the chain. And we want to lock that chain in place. So again, we're going to take our four ends and group them together and go back through the crimp. I'm going to take that and go all the way back through. And again, we can guide it so that it's going right the way down to the desired length that we want. And when we're happy with that, we're going to lock that in place. So again, to do that, we'll let that fall, let the chain fall. And what we want to try and do is not have too short a loop. So we don't want it so that it's right up, so that the crimp is right up next to the chain. Let it just move back a little bit so that we've got some nice movement there. We're going to take our red handled chain nose pliers. And again, we want to crimp the tube. So we want to turn it from the little tube and make it flat. So I'm pushing down so that's firmly caught. So now that is locked in place. So again, I'm going to trim off and make sure you hold the ends that are part of the, the necklace out of the way so that you don't get confused and cut the wrong point. So we're going to hold those really go in with our snips and our side cutters as close as we can and cut. So our next section is to pop on some of our findings. So on our lengths of chain going to work with our toggle clasps and our jump rings. So the toggle clasp is actually comes as one, but we need to separate the two ends. We've got a jump ring in the middle. So we're going to open, open the jump ring and separate the two pieces. So to open the jump ring, we're going to use our two lots of our pliers. We're going to make sure, just check that the little saw mark at the top and we're going to open and close like a gate or a door. I'm going to separate the two. So the one side we're going to add in to the last link of the chain on one side. And we're going to close the jump ring 
in the same way that we opened it, like a door or a gate, make sure that it's nice and secure and it's well closed. So we've got the one side. On the other side, I'm going to use one of the jump rings that you'll get in the kit. So again, I'm going to make sure that the saw mark is at the top. Our pliers either side and open. And that's going to go into the last link of the chain. And we're going to add in the bar and close up. Again, checking that that's nice and neat. And that gives you your fastening. So you can see that's your illusion necklace. We've actually got a few of the bicones left over. So to make, um, make our suite of jewellery, we can now make some earrings to match our necklace. So to make the earrings, we're going to need our earring findings, our shepherd's hooks, our ball head pin with a little ball at the end that stops the Swarovski elements from falling off, and our bicones. So starting off, we're just going to do a simple pattern and we're going to add on the Swarovski elements to the ball head pin. So I'm just going to pick up, so first of all, I'm going to pick up one of the purple and slide that down to the end. Then one of the clear. Then a grey. Then a purple. And then a clear. And then finally a grey. And you can do any combination that you like. So I've got those onto the ball head pin. So now what I want to do is I'm going to create a simple loop at the top using the head pin. So to do this, I'm going to support the, the ball of the head pin with my finger and the elements, the Swarovski elements. I'm just going to come out and bend slightly at an angle. I'm going to take my yellow handled snips, my side cutters, and snip off to about a centimetre. Then I'm going to take my blue handled round nose pliers, which are perfect for forming loops. And again, I'm going to support the, the ball of the head pin and all the decorative beads. And I pop the end into my round nose pliers and start to turn towards me. I'm just turning my wrist, moving it round to form a loop. And to get that loop, so you can see it's slightly to one side, so I'm going to pop my pliers back in and a little twist so that it's more in line with the bicones. So now I've got the detail for the earrings. So I'm going to take one of my shepherd hooks and with the shepherd hook, I've got an a loop that I can open here but I've also got a loop that I can open here. So in the same way as with the jump ring, I'm just going to support the finding on my finger. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. I'm going to open again, like a door or a gate and open up the loop. I'm going to take the, the bicones on the head pin and drop that onto that loop and go in and close again, like the gate or the door. So you've now got your matching earrings.